All right, I just got done editing this video, this talk with Vitor, the headless sketcher on Instagram. It is absolutely incredible and inspiring. And in this video, he's gonna share some of his early pages. He's gonna talk about how not to let social media ruin your art. He's gonna talk about his process like he never has before. Share his inspirations and when you think he has a unique style that no one else can even copy, you will learn how he developed it and he brings it down to earth so that you realize he's just a person like the rest of us. Mm -hmm. All right, Vitor, I'm so Hi. glad to talk to you today. I've been following you on Instagram and really excited to see some of your work. So mm -hmm. for people who haven't seen you on Instagram, can you show us some of your pages? Yes, of your course. I, I brought to show some of my most recent ones. And this one was done around November, so two months ago. Nice. Um, some other ones yeah i love that butterfly this this one was made because um i was visiting a part of indonesia last mm. not this summer but last one and before going i was i my my idea was that i was going to see a lot of species and especially butterflies and uh, yeah. other types of insects so i kind of did this one prior to to go on these holidays drawing big cuts is one of my favorite things yeah yeah i like how you have the little section of the the pattern the, the pattern yeah, yeah yeah uh i usually when when i decide to include the include the pattern detail on a painting i usually start by it cuz oh uh the scale i paint this part is usually bigger than the one i do here so this allows me to understand how the pattern and colors blend in a higher scale and then when yeah. i go and make the the full or half body animal yeah. this uh, comes into mind and helps me understanding what's that's actually cool. going on with the that's really the cool. animal is that is that a clouded leopard or an ocelot it's a margai oh it's margai. a margai okay, nice. yes. no i i usually draw a lot influenced by something i see or i read and uh I've, i was watching some tv and the margay a piece appeared and they were talking of how incredible they evolved in time that uh, their wrists are closer to primates than to wow uh, cats because they can twist it in a way that they can hang upside down and yeah. after that i i thought i i really had to to look at it through drawing you know I think I'm gonna have to watch that. Was that on a document, a nature documentary? Uh, probably yes, on National Geographic Channel. Maybe something called Big Cats or Cat Families. Okay, yeah, so yeah I'll look that up. That sounds really. Yeah. Cool. I also like to draw in this size, like almost postcard size. Just yeah, yeah. I, apart from big cats, I would say birds is also one of my favorite uh, type of animals to paint because. The detail of the feathers are so mm. so challenging, and I think the most challenging one animal is the more fun I have uh, oh, painting okay. it. Yeah, yeah. This in this one, the writing comes to play a mm. bigger role because it occupies a bigger portion of the, yeah. the painting. And again, I started by the detail, mm. and then I went oh <laughs> yeah trouble mirroring my finger moves yeah yeah this came definitely after the the pattern details nice nice that's so cool so one of the things that i am um amazed by with your work and something that i've been really curious about mm -hmm. is um this kind of difference between uh the, or the role that words can play in art and mm -hmm. You know, I think in today's world, we are so used to um, seeing um, printed letters all the time and they feel very, um, maybe the art has been taken out of the letters and we think of them just as a way of communicating mm -hmm. um, verbal information. But from your perspective, what is the difference between words and drawings? Uh, I think the 
main difference is perhaps um, the visual effect it has on you that um, an image is easier in more easier uh, interpreted by the human eyes because mm. you identify a pattern or a shape or a object while writing you can pass by tones of writing every day without really stopping and uh, reading what he's uh, saying mm. and i think mm, when you see writing you you really need to stop and pay attention to to what the writing is telling you and that also touches you especially to a piece of art so that's one of the powers i i find in uh, including writing on my my works mm. yeah. i think mm, I think writing can be understood from kind of two perspectives and one is the visual one because um, writing can be a very useful tool uh, on your works because I think as natural journalers in general have, have a bigger understanding of that because um, you can use writing as a connector of elements uh, through the page because you have especially when you are constructing a narrative, a storytelling, you have pieces and the writing forms uh, a sense of uh, unity on the page. And um, also not only between elements, but between the expression of the elements, for example, you have a piece of, um, you have one, you are drawing one animal in watercolor and tiny detail just on pen or uh, on with brush pen so just black and white or uh, with you use the thicker pen on the upper one and then a thinner one on the bottom and um, the writing can come into place and make uh, in create a relation between the two uh, small drawings inside the page yeah. and for example i really like uh, a lot of influence on my work comes from oriental art mm. and um, the role that calligraphy and uh, mm. writing takes in their pieces of art and I've, yeah. I even I find it very interesting that I, I don't know if this is an absolute true but we or uh, occidentals had mm. uh, have a tendency to say how you write that character and yeah i i found multiple times that in oriental uh, reference they say how do you draw that character so they yeah. i think they, they have a bigger notion that uh, a character is also an element of design uh, mm -hmm. at least more than us yeah and for example uh, i love this this small woodblock mm -hmm. print yeah um, I, I usually have it around my desk to take mm. a look at it very yeah. often. And you can see that there are two elements in this drawing and there are the trees that are made with a very thick brush pen, uh, mm. very loose. And then you have the birds that were done. It almost looks like it was wood burned or mm. with a very thick, thin um, piece of metal. Yeah. And what I find very interesting is that the writing in this page, in this uh, print, is made with a thickness that is in between the um. the tree branches and the birds. And mm. uh, if I look at the page and I and I start to analyzing, if imagining if the writing was not appearing, then I think yeah. that the birds and the tree itself would kind of go away from each other mm. that you would feel like you are looking through two layers that were pasted and not through one painting as a whole and i think that the writing here um it's the unifying element of all the print yeah yeah that's really mm. cool and it seems like mm -hmm. in that piece as well there's um most of the visual elements um, mm -hmm. are going sort of diagonally and then the writing Love is mm -hmm. at an angle to that which is also exactly uh, exactly because my fault i was showing the piece like this but it's it's meant oh, to be oh, like right. this okay That's yeah right. yeah that is yeah that's really beautiful yeah mm -hmm. i wanted to show you um sort of along the same lines i'm i i'm i'm glad that you brought up 
um, oriental art. Is that a Japanese um, or is that a Chinese? Um, uh, I don't know uh, which country this okay. is, but I, I believe that Japanese. Yeah, Japanese. I, also, the I don't name. Know if you've seen um, this. Mm -hmm. I, I'm kind of in between Oriental and Occidental. There is, mm -hmm. you know, the Middle Eastern, and this is a, a graphic novel. And this oh, guy's okay. not Arabic, but he did study Arabic calligraphy. And in this book, it kind of shows that you know, going from drawing to um, writing is not always like like there's kind of like a transition stage. And I think mm -hmm. like what you're mentioning about um, some of the Oriental writing systems there's less of a distinction between a word and a drawing. So um, that is that is really cool to hear. And you can, it, that was something, and I think partly because of um, Islam and some yeah. of the rules about um, representing mm -hmm. drawings in Islam, they use the calligraphy to become the main um, visual element. Mm -hmm. And um, wow, that's, well, that's really interesting. Um, thanks for um, sharing that part. Um, oh sort of more along that, um, mm -hmm. how did you get into um, using um, words the way that you do in your drawings? Mm -hmm. I, I, it started spontaneously, I, I believe, because I started using it because I truly have fun writing and mm -hmm. not writing for um, with a thought of like uh, re recording some ideas or I just enjoy writing. The act of holding the pen and traveling through the paper, it's very pleasant. Mm -hmm. Just um, copying some text, some um, write, some um, reportage I'm, I'm reading on a magazine. And mm -hmm. just the act of copying it, it's pleasant to me. And um, I started to include it in the drawing. I can actually show you the first one where I, Ooh, I did this. Because in a sketchbook, yeah, it, this was the first. It's a art art beat beast. Art beat, yeah, yeah, okay. African antelope. Yeah, and yeah, I just thought that oh, I I'm drawing about this animal, and I'm actually reading about it yeah. to because I'm curious. No, no other reason to be drawing it apart from yeah. cur curiosity and. I thought I'm going to write down and register what I'm, what I'm learning about this animal. And um, with time, I, I evolved in a way that uh, I I value a lot the writing of my works as a way of bringing the the research part prior to start the painting, the mm. references, the information I read uh, before drawing about the species this um, which is some uh, usually um, a part of the creative process that you don't see on the final piece mm. I, I like to bring it and let people also enjoy it yeah mm. that's really cool um so how long ago was that drawing that you just showed uh, it has two years two years okay. yes I, it's quite I'm not a. I, I draw since I was a little kid, but I started drawing mm, this way and taking it more seriously around four, th th between four and three years ago. Yeah. I'm a, yeah. a newbie, if you can say. I, I believe. <laughs> okay, and then um, did you? I mean, your your handwriting is very beautiful, and I mm -hmm. think um, people sometimes worry, at, like in the nature journaling community, and most of the people who are watching this people are using um, their writing for collecting information and stuff mm -hmm. like that. And um, sometimes people um, share that they're, they don't like the way their writing looks or it's hard to read. Did you have, did you study calligraphy at all or what uh, is? No, no, I didn't. Um, it started evolving with time, I guess, yeah. I'd, I have to confess that sometimes I also don't if I go back to a painting, I also don't understand fully what I wrote. Yeah, especially uh -huh. past times since since I left school or yeah. studies. And when you don't have to write for someone else to understand, you kind of let yourself go. And uh, I'm just writing for the pleasure of um, taking the information from my hand to my brain and uh, right. 
not thinking that someone else will uh, still have to read it. Yeah. Okay, great. Yeah, I'm going to come back to that. I want to come back to that mm -hmm. idea because um, um, you mentioned the thing about how we interpret visual information um, like images or drawings or photos mm -hmm. really quickly and automatically and that the words require us to go deeper. I want to come back to that um, a little bit later, but as far mm -hmm. as like legibility and being able to read the words um, and the role that plays, um, I, I remember as a kid, I loved um, Leonardo da Vinci um, mm -hmm. notebooks, um, but I saw um, photos of the Mona Lisa painting and I didn't like it mm -hmm. um, because I like the way it looks with um, all of his writing. And just in yeah. terms of like mm -hmm. uh, being able to read, uh, you know, like people, most people aren't reading what he, he wrote. It's just the pure visual um, aspect of, of the words, you know? Mm -hmm. And I think even on some of them, it's uh, it's like he's reusing the paper. So yes. on this one, I mm -hmm. think you know it's not like he was intentionally writing there. Um, this is just the uh, mm -hmm. reuse of the paper. So what would you say as far as like legibility goes, and like is it important um, I, that people can read it? Mm -hmm. I think it's not uh, super important as uh, most people usually consider it so to me the fact of the writing being legible is not as important as people usually consider it because when i'm watching some nature nature journal page or other piece what i like the most is to see through the painting be to be able to see the artist's mind uh, working through the paper and I think the more relaxed the writing or the drawing can be, the more that uh, shows. And I think that was perfectly, it's, it was a perfect example, this Da Vinci page that you just showed, because you look at it and I think through the writing, you can, you in your head, you can picture Da Vinci writing and uh, his thoughts going, exploding around the paper. and. When you look at Mona Lisa, it's you can appreciate it or not from the artistic point of view, but you you don't see the the, the artist thoughts going mm -hmm. uh, behind the painting at until certain point. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah that's that's Mon a really cool way to think about yeah. it. The Mona Lisa was made was painted for other people to look at. Mm -hmm. um, exactly. And he was probably, you know, he was getting paid to make that painting. Whereas, um, you know, some of these other, these other ones, maybe he was doing this for, for himself or for his own thinking. So um, how, would you, how would you tell people to find that balance? I think with, with nature journaling, but with art in general, people struggle sometimes like, mm -hmm. is this something for me to read? Is this something f for my process, my learning? Or is this something for other people to look at? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think that's a very good point. And I think it's especially sensitive now because of uh, the fact of sharing on yeah. social media and uh, being visible to others. And um, I, I, I really understand why some people can feel a bit blocked and think, oh, I won't share this because perhaps it's not uh, enough. But um, I think at first point is that art is for everyone, uh, completely everyone, and everyone has their own expression and abilities. And if you show your drawing to 1,000 people and 1998 people don't relate to it or don't find it attractive, but one or two people will find, then I think your drawing, your your it was already worth it that you shared it because um, this person, this other two people will take something from your art and keep it for themselves. Mm. And that's one of the beauties of art is that everyone likes something different and we are looking for different things inside the same painting because yeah. our contexts are different, our interests are different. And uh, for example, I. I really like uh, 
some more na naive, if I can call it, expressions of art, or um, I don't like to use the word talented or not, because mm -hmm. I think it's very, very relative and dangerous, because um, I think the, especially when you are starting, the way other people talk to you about your art is very important for you, for your growth um, afterwards. Mm -hmm. And I like to see uh simple artworks that can resume one subject to just its elementary mm. uh, state mm -hmm. in just either the line work or just a stain of um, of color and for example uh, one other reference i i constantly have in my mind that i really like are the prehistorical paint uh, yeah cave, cave paintings because um they are so naive, and uh, they didn't. Is I, I believe I believe that they didn't exactly paint them, so that some people, mm, two hundred <laughs> years after or way more years after, were appreciating and and still they they are so beautiful. I, all right, I just want to point out here that the definition of naive that Victor is using is not necessarily the one that a lot of people in um, the US today use as their usual definition of naive. So one of the third, like the third definition in my dictionary right here says, naive of or denoting art produced in a straightforward style that deliberately rejects sophisticated artistic techniques and has a bold directness resembling a child's work. So that is the definition of naive that he is using. I always have, I took, because I always have hanging next to me some examples of, oh yeah. Ah, this one is very light, but. Oh yeah. There is a, the goat. Yeah. Um, this one is uh, it's quite sentimental because it, it's in Portugal, so home, home, mm. home soil. And there is also this other, cave in france but um, yeah they they didn't learn art or perspective or mm -hmm. materials and they just used line and uh, pattern of a pattern of color to express uh, wildlife that was around them and yeah I, I also find it very beautiful that first thing that man represent mankind represented were was uh, what the wildlife that's mm. around them yeah yeah that's that's really cool thanks for sharing some of mm -hmm. your uh inspiration there oh, um pleasure. And, and going back to this um whether we're making the art for ourselves or to share um mm -hmm. you did mention social media and this is something that i wanted um to bring up with um mm -hmm. with you is um i think a lot of people and a lot of people who will be watching this um, they go on their phones and they, they look at people's artwork like yours mm -hmm. and on social media you can see um, and compare yourself to artists all over the world. And the way that it works today with our technology is we see the best um, or s subjectively the best. Mm -hmm. um, and so we see the ones that are getting the most attention and we also are just seeing um, billions of, uh, comparing ourselves to billions of people. And I think that can be really hard. Um, mm -hmm. you mentioned it can be hard when people are starting. What advice, um, would you give people or, um, motivation you mm -hmm. would give people who, um, spend a lot of time on Pinterest or on Instagram and feel like it's making it harder for them to make their own art? Mm -hmm. I would, uh, I would give some two or three tips and one would be to to not look at a piece of art that you just found online and forget that that piece is inserted in the context because you just see the final result, but you don't see how that person made, how long it took and what stage of uh, their career that person is. And they are not, they are just showing one final result usually and they don't show the five others that went to trash before they, <laughs> they got a, the decent one, yeah. Because it happens to everyone. Some, sometimes I, it takes me hours to just prepare a pencil sketch to start with the line work, and then in five minutes, boom, I 
it's destroyed and I need to start again. <laughs> or um, first time I was trying to use uh, some more professional uh, cotton watercolor paper. I was so excited and but at the same time afraid because the paper costed so much <laughs> and it took me a lot of planning to lay down i was painting a bird and in 10 minutes i screwed it all with the <laughs> water, watercolor uh, going where, where i didn't want yeah and i I've, i just think people when it's perfectly okay and you should uh, d drink inspirations from wherever you can but when then you go and sit and start your drawing try to erase a bit uh, everything you've seen mm. and don't get demotivated and mm, one perhaps personal tip that I, I would like to give is um, to try start don't start by the final product if you're mm thinking about doing a serious painting and mm, do 10 second uh, sketches or 20 seconds for example mm, oh, here I'll, I'm, I'm starting a painting of a wild dog and yeah. these are 20, 20 second sketches just the more you observe the more you know your subject and the more prepared you are to paint it. So mm. not every every expression of art is valuable and I can find in, immense beauty in a 20 second sketch as well on a mm. painting that took uh, six months to complete. Mm. Yeah. And I've, I, that's one, one thing I really like, for example, in the Natural Journal group on Facebook is that people grow with each other and mm, mm. they're uh, most of people are not afraid of sharing and that's i think very valuable mm -hmm. and you just see what others are doing and you take what you what you feel from that painting and that that helps everyone grow i think because mm -hmm. the more references you surround yourself by the more um, luggage than you have to use mm. your, your mm -hmm. pieces. So you kind of need to keep the balance between um, don't, don't stop looking for references, but also don't uh, submerge yourself on the, um, on the mood of, um, of negativity because of mm -hmm. other people talent. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Wow. And also, for example, I uh, think it at this time it would be interesting to show um, some paintings that I did, some very early drawings from like these are four four years old, around mm -hmm. four years old, and first drawings I, I was making with watercolor because um, mainly before experiment, experimenting with color I was just focused on the line and the line work was my goal mm -hmm. yeah but at a certain moment I I realized that the, the watercolor could come and bring the line to another level in terms mm. of giving it more complexity and the combination of both could uh, uh, reach another expressions and mm -hmm. okay here yeah so if i look back at these ones that yeah I made four years ago i i don't enjoy them particularly on mm -hmm. on a way of a, as a final result right but i still really like them as a process uh, mm. material that i can go back and say oh, mm, wow um I thought I was good that I was already okay at the time, but mm -hmm. still had to grow a lot. Yeah. And I think as an artist, we should also, I think it's also part of ourselves as an artist to always doubt ourselves until a certain mm. level that we are never at the top. It's impossible. And mm. um, it's just a growing process. Yeah. Mm, interesting. 
Um, wow, that's that's really cool. Um, I think seeing some of those um, pages, mm -hmm. I, I wanted to ask you some more. Just oh yeah, some of your early ones. Yeah, okay. Yeah, I was I was basically experimenting with uh, mm -hmm. what line could be comb combining one line of a stronger pen with a base of uh, of a fine liner with a lower value. Yeah, my at this time my 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 use of watercolor was basically geometric shapes. I did I didn't uh -huh. really know how to make transitions or combine uh, uh -huh. different tones. Yeah. Cool. Well, thanks for sharing some of those. Um, mm -hmm more my pleasure yeah yeah it's good to it's good it's always good to see where people started um i think i was um wanting to ask you sort of about like the process you go through and um some of the materials but i think more importantly what this makes me think about is um could you talk a little bit about like how much time do you think you spend um because mm -hmm. i think um you know you're really pointing out that um that it's important to to when we look at other people's art to think about the context think about all of the work or all mm -hmm. of the thrown away the trash drawings um and to think about it that way instead of just seeing that finished one and then hoping that we can just go straight to that um mm -hmm. could you maybe it would be helpful if you share a little bit and i don't think you you might not know the exact number of hours but could you give us an idea of like how mm -hmm. often you spend drawing and practicing of course uh, uh my in my routine how much i draw i i, I draw every time i have always as much as i have, have free time and i think i draw almost every day a tiny bit and uh -huh. sometimes i stay for four hours on the weekends sometimes more um yeah if i'm alone at home and i don't have um someone to talk to or somewhere to go i can easily spend 12 hours drawing straight but some days i also just draw 20 minutes because i have other things mm -hmm. to do yeah and also sometimes for example this past december i didn't draw much because it was more of a family time mm -hmm. and yeah i i think it's very important the time you spend not drawing mm -hmm. i think is as important as the time that you spend actually drawing mm -hmm. and um I, I it's just a habit of mine but i like when i'm working on a bigger piece i like to to leave it on the desks waiting for me for some period and making breaks in between i i usually work on multiple pieces at the same time oh. and i'm like jumping between them oh today mm. i'm working on this one and tomorrow i will go working on that one because that also helps you wash your eyes from the the paper the, from the piece you are uh, diving in and it's very important to step away and just one day of a break is enough for you to think what um, what's going on on this painting and sometimes that that's very helpful mm, that's really cool i like that idea of washing your eyes and and maybe mm -hmm. it's letting the um the unconscious part of our brain is still probably thinking about that painting um, and coming up with ideas when we're not um, consciously looking at it and thinking about it. Um, yeah, that's really cool. Sometimes when I'm nature journaling, I also like to skip around on the page um, and have multiple drawings going. Like, um, you know, if I have, if I'm doing a bird and mm -hmm. the, the bird keeps moving, then I go back and I draw plants because the plants aren't mm -hmm. moving. And yes. then when the bird comes back, then maybe I get like another chance and, and mm -hmm. get it in a different okay. position or something like that. Um, and I find um, that's one of the things that I like about nature journaling is it's good if people have different attention styles. Some people really can focus on one thing for a long time, but other people, their attention, you know, and like maybe in school, mm -hmm. it's hard for them because their attention keeps moving around. But with the, the nature journaling, um, mm -hmm. that seems like it helps. Um, so um, you mentioned a little bit about um, the, the importance of observation. And um, it's really cool for me to talk to you because when I see your work on Instagram, I 
didn't know as much about your process and the research mm -hmm. and the way that you think about kind of getting into the um, getting into the um, the subject matter so much. So I noticed also mm -hmm. on your Instagram you have this quote where you say constantly searching for new ways mm -hmm. to see the world. Could you explain a little bit more about your your process of seeing no, of and looking course. at and observing? Mm -hmm. uh, about that quote, I think it's just um, my way of being uh, as an artist that I'm, I always try to do something different from the one I did before. And um, not always that's possible because you cannot be innovative 100% of the time. Mm -hmm. But uh, I like to challenge myself and go trying to go a step further or just a step, a different step on, on each painting. And about about bringing um, about my, my process that you asked, and I I think it comes from the fact that I never studied nothing related to nature or. Uh, science or wildlife and it's just it was just uh, one of my big big passions uh, animals and I like painting animals is just a way of me um, no uh, learning about them U ultimately that's why I, I paint animals because I want, I'm eager to discover more about them. It's like, instead of watching a documentary, I'm painting this animal and I'm reading about it. And that's my way of uh, meeting him. What I try to achieve with my art is that it's not just a representation of what I'm seeing, mm -hmm. but it's my interpretation of uh, mm -hmm. that subject, of that animal or plant. So that's a bit related to the question of style or um, that different people have different styles, which is a mm -hmm. tr tricky word probably. Mm -hmm. But um, I like pe painting and drawing is very selective and you don't need mm -hmm. to represent something 100% like it is. You can if it's if you're doing some scientific illustration and if it's your purpose. But if you're just sketching or natural journaling, um, you can choose represent this bird very fast and just focus on the head or um, you're seeing it on the side and the wing might be covered by the body, but you really like the wing. So you kind of draw the wing uh, even though you're not seeing it. Mm -hmm. And I like that at the end of a painting, I can look at it and I can see my interpretation of what I what I was um, uh, observing. And for example, yeah, for, I think this is a very good example. Is uh, it's it's still unfinished, and I'm I'm going through it actually for several months already because I'm mm -hmm. drawing just a tiny bit per week on it. Mm -hmm. And here I was I was watching some documentary about orcas and I it was not an animal that I was particularly attracted or interested uh, before and this documentary made me think how interesting they are and what that, um, what marked me the most from these uh, videos were the way they communicate and the sound mm. they make so and um, from previous uh, orca representations that I've seen around, I didn't see many where they would be represented with the mouth opened. Mm. And I wanted to bring that to the painting because I, I like to imagine that when people will look at it when it's finished, they will be able to picture in their heads the sound going out of the painting. And that that's one other thing I really like in in art are uh, is um, when the artist can um, overcome the barrier physical barrier of the paper yeah have something uh, give it something more so and i think that's other aspect that it's very characteristic of natural journaling and why i like to see it so much is that and 
again, writing helps you uh, enhancing that, is that mm -hmm. that painting is very personal to you because you're registering your thoughts, your impressions, even sometimes some some information about your surroundings or yeah. how, how cold is it or, oh, I talk with that person and um, uh, I'm going to register what she, she told me. Mm -hmm. and, yeah, uh, I think that's beautiful to see on uh, on art. Cool. Yeah, that's that's great. Um, and that I think you already started to make the transition into this this um, idea of style. And mm -hmm. I think that's one of the things um, that is very noticeable about your work. Is it would be hard to. I mean, mm -hmm. maybe there's other people doing some stuff like it, but mm -hmm. the way no, that you sure. use, the, the mm -hmm. way that you use the words, and then the way that you do this sort of these lines um, mm -hmm. inside and it almost looks like you just start going around on the paper like this and then mm -hmm. suddenly it turns into like an amazing parrot or octopus. Mm -hmm. um, so I think that can be amazing when someone doesn't have to put a signature on and you can just recognize like, oh, that's the headless sketcher. Mm -hmm. um, that's Vitor right there, you know? Um, mm -hmm. So I think, you know, I'm curious about what your thoughts are about style and also just like how can we um how how can we help people people who are um get kind of confused by that or feel like they need to find their own style or they're they're afraid to kind of take inspiration from other people because you're mm -hmm. the type of artist where you know if i want to be inspired by you or learn from what you're doing and i start kind of trying to do it that way part of me um might think oh i'm just copying him and it obviously looks mm -hmm. like i'm copying him maybe i shouldn't even try learning from him and then I might get confused and think like, well, what's my style? He already took that cool idea. What will be my special thing? Like, what would you tell people? Um, no, first of all, I, I always feel very happy when someone tells me that they can recognize my paintings if, and even if they are not labeled under. And I would also be very happy if you, if you would start using, I wouldn't call it style, but techniques and mm -hmm. you would create it into your own expression because it means that you found some inspiration on my art and that truly makes me happy probably the um, the most amusing sensation of making art is to mm -hmm. uh, inspire others mm -hmm. and i think it's everyone i think all artists' work is free for other people to take and uh, try their own, uh, not imitation, but uh, personal regis regis uh, registration on the paper. Mm -hmm. And for example, I started using this uh, line work from some classes I had during studies and um, my class was around 30 students. So 30 students were doing the same exercise mm -hmm. and there were 30 different uh, examples of uh, of how to do it because it's impossible uh, to do it the same and even yeah. even if i do it twice the same uh, the lines will never be the same uh, right they are they always come different even sometimes when it's for a uh, uh, a painting for a client or I need to take some more attention to how the lines are that I and I do different passages with some transparent paper. Mm -hmm. Even the paper moves on the table and right. the line uh, I, I also like that because it's quite in, unexpected mm -hmm. to a certain percentage how the workflow uh, evolves and yeah I could Show you, um, for example, just for fun, I was. I have a drawing of a mm. Marco goat, and this was the first passage of line. And then I went the second one, and then I had a, went for a third one. Mm -hmm. And it can it can different all the times also i was trying to either simplify it or around the edges yeah um, 
but coming coming back to the question of style um i think everyone has a style even can be more recognizable mm. or less recognizable but it's i think it's the the gathering of your references your level of practice and your intention and that mm. creates your style or expression uh, perhaps is a better mm. better word and perhaps i can just um explain a bit how i do my one painting from the beginning to the end and that yeah. can tr shed some lights on yeah that'd be awesome yeah. so i usually start the depend if i'm the, making the painting for myself without compromises or if i'm doing for mm -hmm. for a third party and i had i had either start with some small thumbnails of how the composition i would like it to be or mm -hmm. for example here on this octopus piece that i i did quite recently i was i was uh, experimenting with how the how the tentacles would curl yeah because i wanted i wanted it to to feel like it's not sitting but slightly touching the ground yeah but i wanted the tentacles to have the feeling of arms that curl and can grab things so mm -hmm. yeah here I'll, it's that or uh, if i'm doing the painting just for myself then i i just do a i, I select different references i mm -hmm. i like to see a lot of images and then always try to combine them so that mm. the, the position where i'm drawing these species or the way it's turning or it's always uh, unique because it's a, a mix of different references mm -hmm. and then after this initial pencil sketch which it's not very it's not very detailed i just some main shape uh, okay the pencil sketch could be something of this level of detail mm -hmm. just general shapes and mm, yeah this one's never i they're old already never never came to put pen on them but mm -hmm. this is the base for then making the pen drawing and okay the, mm -hmm, so, so, so you get the you get the shape of the animal um in the pencil and then you do afterwards you do the thing with the pen okay yes mm -hmm. uh, on my early early stages of um, using the pen uh, the the line drawing i was doing it without a base but mm -hmm. it was quite frustrating on how mm, misshapen and not non-harmonious would would come right. Sometimes that's interesting, eh? and there are artists that prefer to have that uh, unpredictable result. But for me, that because I like to have a slightly loose style, but still I like to have a level of detail and representation that it's um, it's uh, true to the subject. Yeah, um, and truly the pen line continuous line drawing is just pure fun and mm -hmm. uh, not thinking too much it's it's like these uh, kids uh, notebooks that you yeah. have dots with numbers and you just connect number one yeah to yeah before. and yeah the pen just goes along the lines of uh, pencil drawing uh -huh. and then at the end you have your drawing complete not mm -hmm. thinking and that's one uh, advantage point of this continuous line um, feeling is that not like the kids example where you need to go number after yeah number. yeah here you can be on number three and suddenly you think oh i'm going to jump to number 62 because uh -huh. i don't know i just like what it is yeah and yeah that's how i i go through the page and it results on something these were very fast yeah on the zoo well, is that a pheasant yes I, it was a i don't remember the name but maybe silver pheasant was uh -huh. 
kind of white silver and it had a blue and red tail maybe i don't oh, remember cool. yeah. uh -huh. this one i drew from the billboard at the zoo not from <laughs> nice yeah and and then you come back and do the color afterwards yes and uh, then usually at this stage is where i include start to include the writing okay i've tried also to draw the lines on the writing so mm -hmm. first register some writing on the um, on the page before putting the lines mm -hmm. but not only it gets um, not so pretty if i can say but also it's not so interesting because part of what i'm writing along the page are also my impressions uh of how i'm doing the drawing of um, oh a lot of things I learn about the animals by drawing it. Yeah. Uh, well, this shape is like this because mm, something. For right, example, right. Mm, I was drawing a cheetah very recently. Yeah. Um, and I was drawing it and I was noticing compared to, for example, this marga or other um, big cuts that I've painted in the past, how broad the um, no strills and this oh, yeah. special area are and then i was just curious and i went to write and uh, i went to read about it and i discovered that um, cheetahs are the big the how was it ah okay that ch this canine canin, i'm not sure if in english it's called canine this big yeah. Uh, cheetahs have the one of the smallest of different cat species mm. because it evolved in a way that it couldn't be too big, so it had to leave space for the nostrils to grow because, mm. so that they could um, inhale more oxygen mm. and reach higher speeds when running. So that's and I registered, I, and then I registered that on the page because yeah. it's something so curious and. That's what I'm drawing for, for discovering things like that. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, that's that's really cool. Um, yeah, I love that cheetah one and the idea that um, there that you notice the detail about the way it looked, and then that led mm -hmm. you to be curious, and then you found out um, a, the reason for that is um, so cool. Um, okay, this is really fun. All of this is really fun. I think. Um, it would be great to do um, the lightning round. So I have some um, fun questions um, that are kind of quick. Are you ready for that? Yes, yes, I've been waiting for. Okay, so um, question number one, is coffee an essential art supply? Uh, no, it's very, no. Impor very important, but not essential. Okay, great. All right, next question. Is your studio, your workspace, is it organized or and like very simple or do you have stuff mm -hmm. everywhere? Yeah, stuff everywhere. I don't have stuff everywhere because my studio is very small. I, it's just mm -hmm. a, a division of my, my flat. So mm -hmm. I have one desk, one wardrobe and some shelves. So there are no things everywhere because there is no more everywhere. But <laughs> in, inside of the space I have, then yes, it's unorganized. Okay. Um, if you could make art with any historical figure um, mm -hmm. or historical artist, who would you want to um, make art with? Mm. I'll, I'll, can I give two answers? Yeah, sure. In one way, I would choose uh, the, the first people that made the cave paintings. Uh, I would, I, I would like to stand some meters of distance and see them communicate and uh, uh -huh. draw it. And if I had to choose one person, then I would choose Okusai from from Japanese uh, woodblock prints because it's a big inspiration to me. Nice. And, uh, nice. Great, great choices. Um, if you could only have five art supplies, um, mm -hmm. what would you, what art supplies mm -hmm. would you want? Uh, I'll go for a pen, pen, mm -hmm. uh, fine liner. Mm -hmm. uh, I'll go for the watercolors, mm -hmm. one, one set of watercolors. Uh, paper, 
I, I would go for no, I would take paper because I think I could do something somewhere uh, on a leaf I found uh -huh. in a forest or something. I would put um, uh, drawing pencils because they are very important for the detailing. It's something I included on my um, process not so long ago and it, it really helped me achieving another level of detail. Mm -hmm. I would put a white gouache. Uh -huh. um, because I I use it in the end to make shiny elements or uh -huh. like strokes of uh, light and uh, reflections. I think and that's five that, already. Is that that's five? Already. Uh, no, because I took the paper out. Oh, oh, you did. Okay. Okay. So you have one more the then. One. A chocolate bar. <laughs> 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 okay. Very nice. Very, no, very, very important to keep your uh, belly motivated to keep <laughs> on drawing. Okay, that's a great one. All right. Um, if you could have an artistic superpower, um, mm -hmm. what would your superpower be? Um, it would be to be invisible for animals. Oh. So that, so that I could stand close to them and draw them without without being eaten eaten <laughs> yeah. i kind of imagined some invisible bubble around me but with space enough for me to put the, the, the art yeah. yeah that's yeah. a great one that's that's a really cool one um okay do you think art will get better or worse in the future better the the time i used to think because I don't um, relate myself so much to contemporary art and mm -hmm. um, some forms of abstraction or other mm -hmm. um, other um, expressions. Mm -hmm. But I think that only challenges more other types of art, like natural journaling. Or mm -hmm. why do you natural journal when you can just take a picture? And I think mm -hmm. that's more challenging to the other media and techniques and that will only make the art better for the future. Okay, great. Um, good job in the lightning round. That was oh, really fun. Um, great fun. <laughs> all right. So um, my last question then is, um, what kind of words of motivation do you have for people? Um, and you gave some good motivation already, but um, for young people or people who are getting started um, mm -hmm. in drawing animals or doing nature journaling, what kind of last like sort of philosophical mm -hmm. inspiration would you um, give them? Mm -hmm. To conclude, I would say don't be, don't over respect your painting or your paper. Mm -hmm. It's after all, it's just a piece of paper. And if, if you ruined, I, I, I've seen one of your previous guests uh, saying that no one gets killed for a bad drawing. I, don't, I, I cannot recall his name, but I really liked his his, his talk. Is a very cool guy. And yeah, don't, just don't be afraid. And if it's uh, it's if it's a bad drawing, then just move to the next piece of paper. Yeah, don't over respect your drawing. Mm. And I would challenge actually people to take a drawing that you like and put it on the garbage bin <laughs> that will help you to understand to kind of um, understand that it's just a drawing and the less the less respect you have for um, for the final result let's say the more yeah. relaxed it will make you and the more fluid and uh, stressless uh, results you will achieve in the future. Yeah. yeah, yeah, I love that. I love that one. I think that's a huge problem. When I was a kid, I would, I would mm -hmm. start on a drawing, and I would be so focused and so worried about it, and then um, I would not like it, and then I would start like a, I would just worry too much about it, and then, mm -hmm. um, or sometimes when my drawing, if my page is starting to look good. Or especially with a, um, a journal, when you have a whole sketchbook and maybe you're halfway through mm -hmm. and it's starting to look good, 
then you worry about trying new things on the other exactly. pages. So, yeah. yeah um, I also feel that, and when right now I draw more in the individual sheets, but I used to draw more into sketchbooks, and mm -hmm. the better it gets, the the feeling of uh, responsibility you get. Yeah. With it. Yeah. Um, well, thank you so much for coming on the show. So and for, for, for people who want to see um, mm -hmm. more of your work, um, where would you want them to to find you online? Yeah, mainly on Instagram is where I'm more active and more um, where I share more things, uh, either final pieces or process, or I also where people can contact me easily. Yeah. Great, great. And you are you are going to be um, doing some more prints, uh, fine art mm -hmm. prints for sale. Is that true? Uh, yes, yes. Um, I'm I'm starting. I'm developing uh, the process of printing at home so that mm -hmm. I can control all the process from cool. making the painting, scan it, editing uh, small corrections, and then uh, control the cho uh, the choice of paper, inks, and yeah, that's something very fascinating. And it goes back a bit to woodblock prints. Yeah, feeling, and it also makes me grow as an artist because mm. I need to research about colors and papers and uh, what is the paper made about and that's mm -hmm. very interesting. So I hope that soon um, I'll have my own printings available so that yeah, they are more personal for people. Cool, yeah, I'm really excited to see um, how your, your prints develop and how oh, you grow as an cool. artist with that whole process. Um, well, this has been really fun. Um, thanks for coming on the show. And I hope people check you out on Instagram. You have a ton of awesome work there. Well, thank uh, you so much. Yeah, thanks for making the time. Yeah, first time I'm speaking so openly about my heart and my art and heart. <laughs> and yeah, that's very, very grateful for that. <laughs> I am so glad that I talk, got to talk to Vitor today and it is so inspiring to see his process because when you look at his pages that he posts on his Instagram, you just think, wow, his style is unique and how did that just appear out of nowhere? But when you hear him talk about it, you realize he's just like every one of you and he has inspirations, he looks at other sources of art gets ideas and then incorporates those into his style. So that just makes it so much more accessible and so much more realistic for the rest of us to pursue our artistic goals. So glad to talk to him and learn about the process. And if you can't wait all the way until next week for the next episode of the show, check out these playlists here.